Tuesday. How y'all doing? Growing in the knowledge of the resurrected Christ. What does that mean? What that mean? Yeah. <laughs> ain't no question and answer. <laughs> oh. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let there be healing in this word that your people would be edified, your name be glorified. In Jesus I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, okay, I appreciate it. Um, please turn with me to Mark chapter 5. Again, Mark chapter 5. Beginning at the first verse. I'm reading the American Standard Version. Starting at verse 1. And they came to the other side of the sea into the country of Gar Gerasene. And when he was come out of the boat straightway, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling in the tombs. And no man could any more bind him, no, not with a chain, because that he had been often bound with feather, fetters and chains, and the chains had been rent asunder but by him, and the fetters broken in pieces and no man has strength to tame him. And always, night and day, in the tombs and in the mountains, he was crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And crying out with a loud voice, he saith, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure you, torment me not. For he said unto him, Come forth, thou unclean spirit, out of the man. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he said unto him, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were on the mountain side a great herd of swine feeding. And they besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And he gave them leave, and the unclean spirits came out and entered into the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep into the sea, and number about two thousand, and they were drowned in the sea. And they, they that fed them fled and told in the city and in the country, and they came to see what was that had, that had passed. And they come to Jesus. Behold him that was possessed with demons sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. Even him that had the legion, and they were afraid. Then they that saw it declared unto them how it befell him that was possessed with demons and concerning the swine. And they begged to beseech him to depart from their borders. And as he was entering into the boat, he that had been possessed with demons besought him that he might be with him. And he suffered him not, but said unto him, Go to thy house unto thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee, and how he had mercy on thee. And he went his way, and began to publish in the Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men marveled. Thank you. The book of Mark was first of the gospel books written and is the basis of the other gospels. Mark presented itself like Spike Lee movie. Fast paced, always moving, presenting the Sitz Van Laven or the spirit of the time. Socially relevant, controversial, and thought-provoking. Mark, while not an eyewitness to the accounts of Jesus, 
but chronicles the preaching and teachings of Peter. In a very pastoral way, Mark wrote this book to the Christians in Rome who lived in a desolate and often hostile environment. Mark wanted them to understand the nature of discipleship, what it meant to follow Jesus in the light of who Jesus is and what Jesus had done and would keep on doing. Mark tells us God's plan of redemption and about discipleship in the context of Jesus' life and death and resurrection. Well, such is the case in this narrative presented in the fifth chapter of Mark. Oftentimes this narrative, when preached, focuses on the healing of legion. Mark tells the story well, and if preached, this story can really shout a congregation because we all know a legion. Mm -hmm. And at times, one time or another, have been legion. Well. Legion, and I call him legion because Mark gave us no other name to call him, was healed of an unclean spirit. Mark records, legion once was naked, screaming and yelling in the tombs and cutting himself. But now he's sitting clothed and in his right mind. Well, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Give thanks to Jesus ought to have been said. But the people said, Jesus, get the hell out of town. <laughs> Jesus healed someone's son, someone's future husband or father. Yet the people of the town called Kadara asked Jesus to leave. Wow. Why? Why this response to the miracle by the people in this town called Kadara? Well, I want to, for a moment, to look at this town called Gadara. Gadara, this city located on the coast of the Sea of Galilee, in the Garrison region, and surrounded by mountains, dotted by tombs for a considerable distance surrounding the city. While under the control of Israel, Gadara was a shipping port, but ravaged by war and massacred the entire inhabitants of Gadara, the Roman Empire now holds siege to this town. Now, this town that has seen many days of war, death, and violence is a thriving, busting community and is the capital of the Roman province of Piora. Mark reports the people in the town called Kadara as being herders, and their stocks were pigs, some 2,000 pigs. Now, most pig farms of that day herded at most two, maybe 300 pigs. But these people of the town called Gadara was industrious. Mm. They had it all, mm. a booming economy, a beautiful ocean and picturesque mountain view, and they also had legion. Mm -hmm. There is a legion in every community. And in this community, Legion resides in the tombs. His address was Evergreen Cemetery. <laughs> yes, there was a time they tried to tie him down and with chains and it didn't work. So when he left the town and began to live in the tombs, they didn't bother Legion and Legion didn't bother them. Oftentimes, we in today's world want to disregard our less thans, our misfortunates, our have not. Legion became the representative of the disenfranchised of every community. Please, please don't believe that he was the only one. There were others, but he was the first one to find his salvation. <laughs> you see, I would have missed the fact that there were others had it not been for the people in the town called Kadara. Walk with me for a while and I'll try to bless you. And I'm going to tell you this story about the town of Kadara. Jesus, after healing this man of the demons um, and allowed the demons to be set into those pigs, that's what he did. The pigs went squealing down the mountains into the oceans. That's what he did. There was a miracle that happened. And sometimes we get distracted by the miracle. Mm -hmm. See, the, the work 
don't start or didn't start at the healing of legion. But he wanted to get to the people of Gadara. We see it happening every day where the people get distracted with their lives. The rich and the famous, the, the, the jet setters, they don't care about the legions of the community. But 10% having 90% of the wealth and doing anything they want but help the 90% of the legions. Jesus comes in and performs a miracle. But like I said, you got to be careful of the miracles because we get distracted by them. Yes, legion is healed. Yes, Jesus want, but Jesus wants to get to the people. Jesus wants to deal with the fact that they didn't care about legion. The people of this town called Kadara only cared about the almighty dollar. They didn't have any health insurance for legion. They didn't have homes for legion. Legion was in the tombs. The question was asked earlier, is this church? Well, I want to ask, where is the church? Because nowhere in this record did they even pray for Legion. So, we now have a, le a, a, a Legion that was be that's been healed. We have a town that has asked Jesus to leave. Now, we're at the question. Je and now, we're at the question. Legion says, Jesus, let me go with you. Even Legion realized he don't belong in Kadar. <laughs> and Jesus said, Legion, I need you to stay. Wow. Now, I always guess any place where they don't want Jesus, that's where hell resides. So Jesus is asking Legion to stay in his living hell. Mm. So the question that I have for us today is, how can you be a witness for Jesus when your address is hell? Mm. Well, I have three points I want to offer you today. The first, the first step to being a witness for Jesus when your address is hell is to go home. Jesus said it to Jesus said it through Legion, go home. Because there are places where Jesus is not welcomed. Mm. The one that was the one that was there when town was created, nothing exists without him, and yet there are places where he can't go. And the only way he'll gain access to those places are through you and I. There are places and there are people Jesus wants to get to. And the only way that he can get to them are through you and I. See, everybody can't handle Jesus. They, Jesus is too big for them. They need him in smaller doses. And that's where you and I come in. Your little bit of Jesus and my little bit of Jesus and their little bit of Jesus will bring them the Jesus they need to heal their sin-sick souls. Mm -hmm. Another reason you must go is you hold someone else's healing and deliverance. Someone else's salvation is tied up in your footsteps. Mm -hmm. They won't know Jesus if you don't go. Mm. Yes. Secondly, Jesus tells Legion to go home to your family and your friends. And in some, ver in some versions, that's family and friends. Now, this was important because our first inclination <clears throat> to go is to go, but not go home. We don't want to deal with the I told you so's or the reminders of what you've been through or them throwing your past in your face. But Jesus wants you to know that home is not a place of your condemnation, but of your greatest confirmation. Because see, at home, they have, would have known you for most of your life. They could attest to the fact that Jesus did do something for you. They could tell you of where you were, but where, but where you are now. 
But I'm no fool. No, no, no. I know that there are people that want to hurt you just to see you hurt. Mm -hmm. And some of them are in your family. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. they must realize and what you must realize and what I have to come to realize is that those people see you, but also they must recognize in you that God has done something yes. through you. And that same thing can be done for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're stuck in the past and Jesus wants to use you to help them get out of the mud. Mm -hmm. He's telling you, don't be afraid of their faces because they may mean it for evil. God means it for your good. Moreover, when you do this, you will be accomplishing that which God has tasked you to do. Mm -hmm. And that is to tell your story. Yes. See, no one can tell your story better than you can tell your story. Mm -hmm. But remember, your story didn't start at the miracle. Mm -hmm. No. You got to tell them the BGM. Well, some of you are asking me what the BGM is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. But God moments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your BGM is where you met Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came into your life. And at your BGM, something strange happened. And you got healed. If you just tell your story, you will discover you have a lot of BGMs. Well, you don't believe me, Legion. Legion, Legion come and tell your story. Mm. There were a time I would run around town naked mm -hmm. and not ashamed. Mm. My address was Evergreen Cemetery, and my closest friends were pigs. Most nights you can find me screaming and cutting myself. But now, I'm sitting upright. I'm clothed and in my right mind. Praise be to the Almighty Father. Oh, Legion, before you start shouting. That don't sound like a complete story. It sounds like something is missing, and that would be right my BGM. Jesus stopped to take care of me. Mm. When no one else cared, okay. he did. Right. When everyone else cared about their money and their power, mm. Jesus came along and cared about my mind and my person. Well, he okay. took the focus off of the economy and put it on the enemy. Go, ahead. Go home and tell your story. You see, Jesus brought me from a mighty long way. When I was down and out, and I didn't have one dime, well. he made a way for me mm -hmm. so many times. Mm -hmm. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, mm -hmm. but he came by and made my enemies behave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you, well. he brought me from a mighty long way, and what he's done for me, he'll do for you. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Amen.